years ago, back in around 2001 or so, I went onto Ford's website and I rather cheaply ticked every single box for all of their products. And to their credit, they sent me all of the brochures. So what do we have? So starting off, we have the Fiesta Special Editions Flight and Freestyle brochure, which was a special edition at the time. And uh, I will pan back so you can actually get a good shot of that, or rather come round like so. And there we go. That was a popular special edition from sort of back in 2001 or so. Now, it is true that uh, at the time there was no way I could have afforded to purchase a new car, but you know, it was nice to, uh, nice to dream. And also it follows my sort of um, traditional approach of getting all of the Ford brochures, certainly for something that I was doing when I was younger. So you can see that the the flight comes with a uh, a 1.3 EFI, which was the uh, Endura E as it was known, or a 1.8 TDDI engine, which was before the TDCI units. The Freestyle came with the uh, 1.25 and 1.6, and also the 1.8 diesel, and that had power front windows and body coordinated um former what oh body color coordinated former fabric trim and a nice ish cd radio as you can see there now it says here model is fiesta freestyle with optional slate blue metallic paint and air conditioning so air conditioning was an option so the Freestyle would have probably been the one to go for. And the colours were quite nice as well for the interior. That Pacific Green, Midnight Black and Pepper Red. What else did we have? Huge range of colours actually. That was the one thing Ford always used to do very well, was they gave you a huge range of colours um, on, you know, sort of quite everyday cars. There was a huge range of options as well that you could... Um, employ to make your car more individual so what do we have here heated windscreen which was a very pioneering Ford thing which had little uh, little wires running through the screen itself and that was available on the freestyle but not on the flight you could also get anti-lock brakes on the freestyle air conditioning and various other options like the sunroof and parking distance although the sunroof could not be had with the optional air conditioning now this was published november 2000 so here we have the ford ka or the ford ka as it was also known i never knew which one it was supposed to be some people said it was the ford car the ford ka or the ford ka uh, I tend to use all three of those depending on who I'm speaking to or what I'm thinking at that particular time. So, you know, this was an interesting little car at the time. There hadn't been anything that uh, looked like it. Um, and it was one of Ford's attempts to maximise the Fiesta platform along with the KA -ca car came a Ford Puma as well. Now, the thing about the KA was it actually slotted in below the Fiesta and slotted in below the Fiesta also in the price bracket range as well. So it was only available at the time with a 1.3 litre Endura E unit because that at the time was the only bond engine Ford had that would fit under this sloping bonnet line. The car was originally supposed to have a two stroke unit. Uh, but quite late in the development of the two-stroke unit, the emission regulations changed and that unit no longer achieved those um, emission targets. So the end result was that Ford had to go into their existing engine range and they discovered that the 
overhead cam range of engines that they had within the fleet would be too tall. So the old Kent Crossflow was given a tart up and became the Endura E. Now the KA had a very interesting looking interior. It also came with a range of options which would allow you to customise it to suit your city car requirements. It was a car that was marketed at both sexes, both male and female, and it was marketed as basic yet comfortable transportation. Having driven one, I can confirm that they're not actually that bad. They ride nicely for a small car, they handle well, and they're not quick, but they're entertaining, is uh, probably the best way to describe it. Now, originally they came as a very sort of basic range of, I think it was possibly three versions. You had the KA1, KA2 and KA3. But as the years went on, you also had KA Collection, which gave you different sort of special edition options. In fact, the KA Collection, I think, was a special edition in its own right. Um, also came with the then sort of standard range of Ford small car trim options only two seat in, in the back as well that was the other thing it was strictly a four seater rather than a five seater you also had the sun collection which had this rather interesting wabasto style sunroof and you also had the luxury ka which came with a leather interior and uh, a cd player and air conditioning Originally you had the KA1, KA2 and KA3, and the KA3 came with air conditioning, um, power steering, CD player and a couple of other things. The two came with electric front windows and I think power steering. The one was very, very basic indeed. The one to have was the three because that had electric windows, electric mirrors, air conditioning, Alloy wheels, which was also a nice little feature, and uh, a couple of other bits and pieces. Now, the KA, there aren't really very many of these left. Well, there's actually probably... I don't know if there's... That's, sorry, let me clarify that. You don't see as many as you used to. And the reason why is they like to rust. And they will rust around the fuel filler cap, around the sills, around the rear torsion beam mounts, pretty much anywhere. And they certainly from sort of quite a young age, even from sort of like seven years old, you would sort of have uh, quite advanced rust in some cases. They also went on the floor pan as well, which was a bit of a shame really, because it was a smart little car. Its intended market second-hand would have been those after efficient and cheap and reliable transportation, which uh, certainly with the uh, 1.3 litre Endura E, it did give you that reliability, but it would dissolve before your very eyes, which was a real shame, because, you know, they were quite a quirky little thing, and uh, they certainly didn't last as long as you would hope. You could... As I say, in traditional Ford style, get it in many, many different colours. And some quite uh, interesting colours as well. These two greens are quite pleasant. As is the pepper red, which was quite a popular colour. This one was published in March 2001. Next up the range, we had the Fiesta. So this one was published in... September 2001. The Fiesta is here in its mark. Hang on a minute, let me get the marks right. Mark 3, Mark 4 was the one with the overly headlights. This is the Mark 5, I think. So, yeah, this will be the Mark 5 Fiesta. Very similar to the Mark 4, based on the same basic platform as the Mark 3, if I remember rightly. So, the Fiesta was really sort of uh, a more upscale car than the KA. Came with a range of various options. And there was really a car to suit all budgets and all tastes from practicality 
all the way up to sporting luxury well sporting enthusiasm let's say we also had a range of 16 valve ZTEC units the Endura E and also a turbo diesel available as well there we are a little bit more about the diesel there was also a range of three and five door options as well and the flight and freestyle are actually covered in this brochure as well as the um, supplement that I looked at earlier you could argue that the range started at the LX grade and then went through to the Fiesta gear which uh, here was shown with the optional moon dust silver metallic body colour and also a rather nice wood trim arrangement with what looks like leather seats and as you can see unlike the ka seating for five also air conditioning as well and alloy wheels another interesting feature apparently the ka from what i understand could never be fitted with a tow bar however the fiesta could Then we come up to the sportier models with the Fiesta ZTEC S, which was uh, quite a quick little car for its day. There's one there with the, uh, the rather nice wheels, and uh, they were 15 inch alloys with 195 50 profile tyres. You also had a range of rather interesting trim options, um, such as the blue steering wheel or red steering wheel leather accents and the blue or red trim as you can see there they did look pretty sporty as well in fairness and then we have the range of options that you could actually get such as the detachable tow bar mud flaps a very period satellite navigation system by becker who were pretty good actually as an audio company or in car audio a sliding sunroof which actually goes up over the top of the roof uh, which means you actually maintain head room inside range of interesting alloy options as well and then we cover various different model availabilities uh, curb weights and other information like that the, uh, the 1.3, that was known as the HCS, or the Endura E, depending on uh, what you look at. It's basically just a worked over Kent cross flow, to be honest with you. But the 1.25 was significantly more powerful, with only a touch more torque, but that torque was developed higher, whereas the, uh, the 8 valve unit developed it quite a bit lower. And... There we go, that's the fuel economy and performance. The 1.3 and the 1.25 were fairly comparable, although the 1.25 actually did better at uh, Extra Urban, and they came in around the same combined, to be honest. And then we have insurance groups, which was back in the, uh, I think, the older insurance group measurings. and more about the specifications then there's the various option packs that you could have specified at the time air conditioning was available as an option on the freestyle oh, and according to this standard on the LX and standard on the gear at this particular time that's pretty cool so actually range LX was arguably, actually looking at that, that's near top of the range. Flight and Freestyle were middle, Encore and E-Diesel were the bottom of the range. Then there's the range of audio systems, which was available at the time. A lot of them came with this one. This one was, what was that? Oh, that was a four disc, or was it a six disc? No, four disc multi-changer. 
uh, that sat in the dash. That's quite a nice option. There was also, obviously, as I say, the air conditioning. And then there was the range of finance options, which was something that Ford actually pioneered during the 80s. And then finally, a very comprehensive range of colours. Now, Imperial Blue was only available on the ZTEC S. In fact, the ZTEC S was only available with Moondust Silver, Panther Black, or Imperial Blue. And there's the range of trims available. So next was the Focus. And the Focus was a bit of a game changer when it came out. Um, it offered surprisingly good handling and a surprisingly good driving experience. And was a world apart from the Escort that it replaced. This was published in May 2001. And it came in four different body styles. The five-door hatchback, three-door hatchback, five-door estate, and four-door saloon. One of the big things was this control blade rear suspension, which was a not a segment first, but it was unusual in the segment at the time to actually have independent rear suspension. So this was a big selling point because it really did give the Focus very capable handling. Also going very big on the uh, racing and rallying pedigree, as they say, win on Sunday, sell on Monday. And let's just have a look at uh, other things that it was available with. Very big on safety at the time as well. That was very much publicised in the brochure. We have, what's this? This is little addendum that was put in, um, mainly about servicing schedules and specifications for the exterior. So that was just included in there because they obviously hadn't got it to 100% correct. Or rather it had changed during the production run and since the publication of this particular brochure. Very big thing on lifestyle and space and then we start at the bottom of the range with the focus cl which actually did come with power steering and electric front windows um, it i don't think it had the heated front screen or air conditioning and it came with these rather depressing wheel covers but it did come in three door five door and the estate. Next up was the Focus ZTEC, uh, which actually came with ABS and traction control, and a sports tuned suspension, and also some nice alloy wheels. Also came with quite a range of options uh, from on the three door the 1.4, 1.6 in both manual and auto, 1.8 and 2 litre petrols, and also that 1.8 TDDI unit. Next up was the Ford Focus LX, apparently. Not sure why that falls above the um, ZTEC, possibly because it has air conditioning, I don't know. And that was available with 1.6 petrol, 1.8 petrol, and 1.8 diesel units. Actually, I am interested to see if it is a feature. Yeah, this doesn't have air conditioning. That's interesting. So this one was actually slotted in below the LX. Strange placement. So the LX actually had air conditioning. And then next up was the, the gear. So it actually slotted in below the gear at this time. So the gear actually came with, well, a gear badge, obviously. Um, a trip computer, heated front and rear screens and electric mirrors and also this weird grey wood trim, plastic obviously. And that was available in 
five door, four door and the estate with a complete range of engines as well. And also had quite a nice leather interior as well. And oh, there's a blast from the past, the cool old style Ford gear knob, which you used to see in the 80s as, uh, I think it was standard on some of them, but you also had it in the RS pack as well. And yep, there you are. It was the Cordia Blackwood finish, it was called. Global closing, so that's one shot for all windows. Air conditioning and remote stereo stalk as well. I think later models actually came with climate control. Then you've got your range of options. So parking distance sensor, the Becker um, sat nav, a detachable tow bar, and a range of interesting wheel options as well. Never seen that style before. I've seen that, that, and that, but never that one. And also, one big thing it also had was that 12 year anti corrosion warranty, which uh, was a bit of an industry first at the time. Certainly a first for this sort of market segments. Six years was sort of more common, 12 years was pretty new at this sort of particular juncture. A little bit more about taking responsibility of the various bits and pieces. Also, big on the uh, recycling aspect as well. And obviously the range of radios, which, like Ford, tend to do, was sort of common, for certainly for this segment of the range. And on to your specifications. The extra cost options. And the range of colours, that was always an interesting one, because they came in this rather garish gold colour called citrus gold, which was sort of a very yellow uh, colour. Pacific green was rather nice, that's sort of common across the uh, smaller range as well. Um, the luxury pack there was uh, certainly available on the gear. The reflex pack was also available as well, which uh, had electronic anti-lock brakes with um, traction control. Now the traction control on the 1.4 and the 1.8 diesel apparently cannot be deactivated. There's also the gear styling pack as well and the climate pack also available to add on should you so desire. Then there was this Focus Black edition, which was basically the Focus, but in black, as you can see there. Came with a CD player and air conditioning, as you can see there. There was also an option to delete the passenger airbag, which is interesting. So, oh, that's why, if you're going to use a... Um, passenger facing uh, child seat. That would make sense. This one's actually shown with um, heated seats. I don't know if that was an option. But it had black leather trim. Oh, heated driver's front and passenger seats. It was actually quite a nice, um, quite a nice one to go for. That was uh, June 2001. Then in Ford tradition, later in the Focus's tenure, you had the RS Focus, this was from March 2001, and this brochure was a little bit more fancy because it looks like you actually went in at the top, as you can see there. So you go in and you pull out the brochure like that, and you have pretty much almost immediately this rather nice poster type thing. You had this, which is a nice little pullout with some sporty facts on it. There you got a little bit of uh, information about the Focus RS. A little bit more information about the Focus RS. It just seems to be on a series of pullouts, looking at this. A 
nice interior shot there. And it had these rather nice Sparco seats and this nice gear knob and handbrake lever. That's going in and on about the seats and interior. A little bit more about uh, its sporting credentials. And this, which I always found interesting, it's sort of semi-see-through. And I remember um, I once had a Sierra Cosworth brochure which had all of the statistics and specifications on a similar material to this, which I thought was rather interesting. So it seems they continued it through to the sporty focus as well. So I'll put that back in a bit. Then we have the Mondeo, which was a staple of uh, the 90s and early 2000s. Certainly uh, very popular amongst the sales representation individuals. This was the price list at the time. So there we go. There is the price list, as you can see there. And what was originally available with the Mondeo? So this was the Mark III Mondeo, uh, which was uh, quite a departure looks-wise from the previous version. And the range started with... What did it start at? Once you get past all of the blurb, it started, I think, with the LX. Now, the Passat B5 and B5.5 Passat, available around a similar time, um, was pretty much the car that Ford seemed to take a lot of the um, um, inspiration from, both in interior and also to agree exterior as well. The Passat was quite a premium option at the time. And um, the... Mondeo was sort of really sort of being pushed up market. Uh, it was also one of the first cars that had wheel sizes that didn't fall below, or the first cars that I can remember, that had wheel sizes that didn't fall below 16 inches in size. As you can see here, I think these were a range of 17 inch options. It was also one of the first cars I can remember that had optional 18 inch alloys, which was quite, uh, quite special for the time. Now it looks like here, uh, that the LX and the ZTEC are almost sort of like level pegging in the range, certainly where it comes to uh, features. And then at the top of the range you had the gear, uh, which had climate control and a few other bits and pieces. And there was also the Gear X as well, which had heated front seats, cruise control, power sunroof and leather trim over and above the gear. And it was basically a car that was very big on comfort. And for the market segment, it was one of the best driving cars um, of its segment. Having driven a number of Mark III Mondeos, they really do drive very nicely indeed. Surprisingly so, actually. They, uh, they're in quite, uh, handling-wise, fantastic. And also the ride quality isn't bad either. They're very comfortable cars to... Uh, to drive and also fun to uh, hurl around as well. See an update on the old classic Ford oval clock there that used to get in the 80s. The uh, cool but fragile cup holder. These are funny these cup holders because they come out as one big long unit sort of about sort of that sort of length and they sort of slot into the dash. And this was also one of the first cars that saw the new range of diesels that uh, Ford bought out at the time as well. In fact, I think here's one here. Yeah, this was the Duratorque DI Turbo Diesel. And it was a 16-valve unit. And it was also available along around... Sorry, also available amongst a number of other range... range sorry, another, a number of other models in the Ford range as well. 
We also had the starting initially with the two and a half litre V6, uh, which I think was a carryover from the previous Mondeo. We also had a range of personalisation options, um, such as these rather nice 18 inch wheels, which, as I said before, was quite unusual, um, certainly for a car in this segment. And yep, coming on to your specifications. And then obviously through to range of audio options, and also the range of trim and colour options, which pretty much fell in line with the rest of the range at this particular time. Then in, what was this? 2003 or so, the range was facelifted, which really just improved it even more, to be honest. Um, it really sort of kept it bang up to the minute with the latest in-car entertainment offerings. Heated and cooled seats on the Gear X, or Titanium X, I think it was now, actually. They didn't, uh, they had a range that was actually above the Gear X, <laughs> so, yeah. These rear lights always interested me because if you followed an early one from behind, they looked, when they were turned on, very reminiscent to the um, Mark I Cortina. So I don't know if that was an intentional styling uh, cue or not, um, but it's certainly something that I used to notice when you used to see, used to see these things everywhere. They also, surprisingly, if you could bump up the luxury from that, they actually bumped up the luxury even further because you had variable climate controlled front seats and you also had this nice range of Recaro seats as well, although that was on the uh, the ST2, ST220 models. There was also a range of new body colours as well. So it was called the New Look Ford Mondeo. And it still started at the LX. That was the ZTEC there. And that was the Gear X, that one. That was the Gear X with the DVD touch screen satellite navigation system. And then we are just running through the brochure and the range of body styles that were available at the time. But it seems that all models actually had climate control. That was a big thing. Um, a number of competitors, like the Peugeot 407, were actually coming onto the market with climate control across the range. So Ford obviously followed suit um, by putting climate control across the range and just improving things like uh, the range of options for in-car entertainment, the range of trim options, quality of the seats, that sort of thing. But the ZTEC didn't do too badly. You had nice alloy wheels. You had a slightly nicer trim, arguably. Then you work your way up to the ZTEC S with these rather nice 18 inch wheels. And also half leather seating. So this would have sort of been equivalent to, I guess, the Vectra SRI would be uh, probably an equivalent Vauxhall model at the time. Then you come up to the gear, which um, had a rather nice Sony stereo system. Still had the climate control, um, but also had a nice bit of wood trim going on as well, with different style of alloys. Then you had the Gear X, which pretty much came with, well, most things actually. And then you had the S2220. I can't remember if the Titanium X came in in the Mark III or not, to be honest. The S2220 was quite an interesting model. I've never driven one, but um, if they're anything like the lesser models that I've driven, they're going to be pretty impressive. Came with a 3 litre V6 and quite a nice twin exhaust system. And also a range of rather cool Recaro seats as well. And there we go. And then we're on to the specification for the engines and everything else. 
the three litre was actually available in the Gear X as well, but I'm not certain um, if it was available at this particular time. Um, yeah, so the three litre V6, yeah, this time was only available on the uh, ST220, although later, near the end of the Mark III's run, you could get it on the, uh, the Gear X models as well. And yeah, there we go. Very big on safety, as a lot of manufacturers were at this time. And there's the range of alloys, range of options, range of ice options. Those were very big at the time. Rear seat audio system, blast in the past. Telephone preparation as well. And yeah, there we are. Then obviously your range of colours, your range of trims, and which models you could actually specify those colours and trims with. And there we go, that brings us to the end. Um, I'll very quickly go through this one. It's not the most exciting of models. Uh, it was a joint venture between Ford and Volkswagen. Uh, Volkswagen gave us the Chiran, Seat gave us the Alhambra, and Ford gave us the Galaxy. This is actually a later Galaxy, and you can see the VW influ influence clearly the... Uh, heating, ventilation, air conditioning and climate control. So it basically was a Volkswagen with Ford badges. The Galaxy was always seen as the more luxurious version, so more luxurious than the Chiran. And you could also get the VR6 unit as well. So that wasn't a Ford V6, that was actually a VW V6. And also the range of excellent 1.9 diesels you could also get. The 2.3 was a Ford unit. Um, from what I understand, it was the development of the uh, the 125 brake horsepower 2-litre twin cam that you found in later Sierras and Granadas. And then a development of the uh, RS2000 16-valve unit that was used in certain Escorts. And that 2.3, I think, also saw service in the uh, frog-faced Ford Scorpio as well. So, quite a durable engine with a long life. And yeah, there we go. That's the Galaxy. And this was very much a car that seems to have, or type of car that's now fallen out of favour, unfortunately. They were the sort of the real big thing in family transportation for some time. But yeah, there we are, a little bit about the VR6 engine. But uh, yeah, the advent of SUVs and all of that sort of stuff. It's uh, a style that's fallen very quickly out of fashion. Oh, you can even get it with a fridge as well, that's pretty cool. And there we go, all the way through to the end. That is basically all of that. So if you have found this interesting, don't forget to hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you again very soon. Take care, thanks for watching.